Hi everybody. What's the difference between a violin and a viola? Well, to me the difference is that when you have a violin, there's a lot of repertoire and a lot of varied repertoire from all different periods that we can just find. So if we're looking for a new piece, it's not that difficult. But a viola, it's a little more tricky. The viola, though, has great repertoire. We just have to look around to find it. So here I've found a great one. It's a concerto, it's in C major, and it's by Johann Baptiste von Hall. He was a Czech composer. He lived in the 1700s to the 1800s. Uh, let's see, to be exact, 1739 to 1813. He wrote this wonderful, wonderful viola concerto that's accessible. We can all play it. So let's take a look at it right now. It's in the key of C. Who else lived in this time period? Well, Mozart and Haydn did. So this piece sounds very, very similar to a great piece by Haydn, the Concerto in C Major. That brings me to another thing. Well, when we, when we study a concerto like this or a piece by Von Hall, it's not really as great to listen to people play this piece as it is to other pieces that are like it. So when I study this piece, I pay a lot of attention to the Haydn Cello Concerto in C major, same key, and I listen to the Haydn Concerto in D major and listen for similar motifs, similar melodies and patterns where I can see what other people do with those patterns. For instance, the Cello Concerto in C major by Haydn starts like that. So this piece also starts with a big C major chord. In fact, it starts with three large chords that are in C major. So that is totally awesome. It gives me an opportunity to really show the range of the viola and to let my viola ring and sing. So my first objective is to get that C string to really ring out. Even though I'm playing these chords, I can still feel the depth of the viola. So that's the first thing. How do we do that? Well, if we don't have enough bow on the top, we start to sound squeezed. We want to sound very open and ringing. So the first exercise that I do in this piece is that I take the chord at the top, the E and the C, and I try to make the best sound that I can just playing those two notes. If I'm observant, I realize I use the whole entire bow, starting all the way at the frog and going all the way to the tip. The problem is that I need to play the bottom notes of the chord as well. So I'm not going to be able to start those two notes at the top at the frog. So now I'm going to go down about six inches to about a quarter of the bow and see if I can get a similar sound. It's similar, but not as ringy as that one. So I know that I need to stay way down here. After this, I need that much bow. If I start in the middle of the bow, it sounds squeezed and tired. So I'm going to play the first chord just by playing a tiny bit on the bottom two notes and then using most of my bow for the top. Now that's not too bad, but the next chord is going to be on an up bow. So I have to do the same thing. So I need a real bite on that string, bite like that. So I still need a lot of bow on that chord. So practice the chords. And practice the bites down on the bottom. That's good. That's good. That's pretty good. That's good. So it takes a lot more strength at the tip. Now the three notes are all quarter notes, but the third one I'm going to play a little bit longer and play what I call into the rest. So, bam, 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 into the rest. So that's a really full quarter note. And that gives me a nice long ringing sound before I go into my melodic stuff.
Now what comes next is a contrast. It's not long. It's not big. It's a little bit more like I'm tickling my viola. Like that. It's more delicate. Notice I don't lift the bow up. When I finish. That's just a little habit that I do to keep my sound grounded. And what I do is that I know that I don't want to play as large as the beginning, but I still want strength. So I play with about the same bow pressure maybe, but I only use half of the bow. Now, I play the second part of that, which is up a third, so I'm going to try to play a little bit more, so I'm going to use a little bit more bow. I do that by increasing the length of my up bows, if you notice. Small up bow, a little bit more, go to the middle, long up bow. Like that. So that way I get a nice growing phrase. Like so. And you notice I always stop with my bow on the string just like that. Now what comes up next is a really nice Viennese type of leading tone. Mm. which is also the first accidental in the piece. That's that G sharp. I always lean a little bit on the accidentals, especially when they're leading tones, because anything that's not written that's in the key, so we're in the key of C major and all the notes are all natural, and now we have a G sharp. So that G sharp, I'm going to give it a little bit of tension, and I do that by leaning in and a little bit more vibrato. Like that. Like so. Now, in the part that I have, it has a little embellishment written over it, so I use it, so... So I have that little kind of a written out trill, which is really pretty. Okay, so now we've gotten through a little bit of the piece, and we get to this part where all of the students that I have look at me and say, what do I do here? Because it has a little turn on it. So that's going to sound like this. It's written like this with a trill over it, which is really difficult. So we can make a turn. We go note, C, up a note, back to the C, down a note, and back to the C again. So up, down, down again, back up. Like so. So. That takes some practice. Now you'll notice the last piece that I play there, I taper it and stop on the string. That makes my playing elegant. A lot of times people will play and lift the bow up, but it sounds a little bit more aggressive and crass that way. It's much more elegant to finish a piece written in this period on the string and letting the string ring underneath the bow. So now at the beginning we have this beautiful warm sound with a lot of color and variation. Like that. This piece is wonderful. Now there's a little orchestral interlude for a bar or two, and then we get into a beautiful melody again. So, very, very simple. This period, the music is awesome because it's simple and it's beautiful and it gives us an opportunity to sing. Like so. 
and you can hear all of the different things. There are things called motifs. What is a motif? I don't know. Well, the motif is spelled M-O-T-I-F, and it's kind of a little thing that happens. And to me, the motif can be as simple as just a different rhythm. So like at the beginning of the piece, we have a motif with 30 second notes. But now we're going to run into a motif of triplets. Like that. That's the first time that this composer, Von Hall, introduces triplets. So to me, that's a major big deal. So when I'm playing this warm melodic feel there, Suddenly there are triplets. I have to do something a little bit different with those triplets to make the piece sound interesting. So I give them a little swag. Now I'm back square. Like that. And then I have what you call a barrio logic, crossing of strings, where we have one thing that changes and one so make the notes that change louder than the ones that don't. Like so. Then the piece is interesting. That's yes, that's another motif right there. That's the da 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 the melodic feeling with a quicker feel to it. And that's a motif that he uses, so it's that's a new one there. So I'm going to show that off as well. So now we have a melodic feel. Now we're proud. When composers write like that, when Von Hall's writing like this, I always think to myself, well, we have triplets, we have melodies, we have 30 second notes, and then at the end, we put them all together and everybody sings together. And then we finish with a beautiful trill. I love that kind of stuff. And that's the beauty of classical music. And that's a great reason why we should all play this piece because it's so wonderful and there's so many things to learn. Let's go on a little bit. Now there's another melody, very simple again. It's so unbelievably simple, but so unbelievably beautiful. Some people use a fingering like this. With a slide. I try to keep my fingerings, especially in a simple piece like this, I try to lean always towards simplicity. Not only is simplicity beautiful, but it also usually is a little bit more in tune and it's easier to play. That gives me freedom to work on my musicality. So I just stay in first position and play as easily as possible. You'll notice that Von Hall again brings up that triplet motif. So I try to show that off. So it's in doubles, duplets. And cutely, he decides to put the triplets at the end of the phrase to make it end well. And who does that a lot? Well, Haydn does that a lot. So if we listen to the Haydn cello concertos, we'll hear that and we'll hear different ways that we can handle that type of a thing. Going on, we have a little part where there's a big trill here. Like so. It's just two half notes, but we need to add some spice to it because there are things going on in the orchestra or the piano part that we're accompanying. So make your long note follow the melody in the piano or the orchestra. Like so. And then we get to the triplets.
Now you'll see there's a lot of stuff here. There are these triplets. We can use different dynamics. Like so, oops, wrong note. And, or we can just keep it the same and then at the end add a big one. We can do all sorts of things. I don't think it matters that much what we do. I just think it matters that we do something beautiful there. Like so. Well, that gives you a good idea of this piece. This piece is awesome. It's the Johann Baptiste von Hall Viola Concerto in C major. I just went over the first page, but you get the idea. There are all sorts of things that we can do, and every time something changes, let's try to add something beautiful to it. And let's try to make things beautiful by letting the sound ring and figure out how much bow to use for things and how to organize our dynamics that our music is beautiful and interesting. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll play it out a little bit starting at the beginning of the piece. And until the next time that I see you, happy practicing!